In this video, I'm going to show you four things that I wish I'd known when I first started using Final Cut. And the first has to do with connected clips. I found that every time I deleted a clip in the main timeline and there was a connected clip on it, that connected clip disappeared. I'll also show you how to move to the beginning and the end of your video without having to move the playhead. I'll show you where your exported clips are on your hard disk so you don't have to go searching for them in the finder. And finally, I'll show you how to create presets for the effects that you change in your video, in your audio, and also in the text. I'm Bruce McBride, and my goal is to improve your knowledge, speed up your workflow in Final Cut. In the description below are timestamps so you can jump to the appropriate places in this video that you may want to look at specifically. I will be doing more of these tips, so please like, subscribe and press the bell so that you will be notified of these new uploads. As I said in the introduction, when I first started using Final Cut 10, connected clips were hard to get used to. As you can see in the timeline here, there are a number of connected clips to this main clip in the timeline. So if I were to delete that clip now, then all those connected clips go away. The simple solution to this is if you hold the tilde key, and that's the key above your tab key, if you hold that down, you'll see you get a little yellow or orange symbol there, which will then allow you to move that clip to another position and leave the others in place. Or it will allow you to delete that clip and leave the others in place. The reason these things have all happened is because connected clips are connected with a little blue line. And you'll notice that there's one here and you'll also notice them here and here. Now, all connected clips, no matter how many there are, are all connected to the main clip in the main storyline, not to another connected clip. If I was to delete this clip now, and we'll just do it, you'll see that the audio below has been removed too. But if I now hold the command and the option key and click in this position, and this clip is connected to this main clip in the storyline. So if I was to delete this one now, the audio stays behind because it's connected at that point. The next thing I wish I'd known when I first started using Final Cut has to do with moving from the beginning to the end of the video. And this is very simply achieved by using the home key to move to the beginning of the video or the end key to move to the end of the video. Now that's on the extended keyboard. If you've got a laptop or a basic keyboard without the numeral keys, then by using the FN and the left arrow and the FN and the right arrow, you'll move left to right. How many times have you exported a video and then you've come back to your library a couple of days later and you have no idea what folder you exported it to? And with my memory, this happens even after a few minutes of exporting the video. So how are we going to find where those clips are? So if we go to a project that we've exported and click on it, and then come over to the Trident over here, you will see exported files, and you'll see the dates and times that they were exported. If you click on one of those downward arrows, you can then click on Reveal in Finder, you can play it from there if you wish. In this case, it's a JPEG. If we were to go to a video itself, then there's the video reveal in Finder, and it's showing there. You can simply click on that, and that video will start playing. The next tip took me ages to find out. Perhaps I'm a little bit slow, but this is what it is. When you have a clip and you make changes to that clip, whether they be video or audio changes, then once you've made that changes to that clip, you can then save those effects or those changes to those effects and create a preset that you can then have in your effects tab so that you can use those effects on other clips in the future. 
So if we have a clip of the timeline and we come over to the inspector and select the video side, then we can see what effects are on that clip. And you'll notice at the bottom here, it says save effects preset. And so now you can simply type in here, test, and we can save that in any category. I suggest that if you don't have a favorites category, then you simply come down here and create a new category and call that favorites. And then once it's saved in the favorites category, then you can reuse it. You also have the option at this stage to include or exclude whichever ones of these effects you want to keep in the, in the preset. So if we save that now, we've called it test and we move over to our effects tab and we look at video and favorites. Then if we look in there, there's test. Those are those effects now saved as a preset that you can add to any video in the future. Now, should you have created a number of these and you want to get rid of them, there's two things you could do. First of all, you could make changes to this particular preset and then set save effects again. And then if you save that by text and save it to favorites, it will come up and say that file already exists. So if you replace that now, the new changes you've made up here will now be represented in this clip. The other thing you might want to do is that if you've got too many or if you've got out of date ones, you might want to remove them. And to do that, you can right click on it, reveal in Finder, and there is that preset. Select that now and click on my trash and that test is now gone. When I come back here, to favorites, you can see it's now missing. We can do the same thing with audio clips. There is a number of different effects of audio. We could simply do the same thing, that save effects, type in the name, and then save that. And then if you put it in favorites or created a favorites and put it in favorites for the audio, then those will appear in here as separate clips. And finally, we can create presets for text. So if we come up to our text tab here and let's select opener and a base select a basic title and bring the basic title in there. So there's the title in there. And if we come over now to our inspector and select the text tab, we can change the font. We can change the tracking, the alignment, etc. But you can also change color. So we'll make it red. And we could also change the drop shadow. So selecting the drop shadow, show here. Select the black. Now let's put a white drop shadow behind it. And we may want to increase the size. So now if we come up to this word normal here, you can see there's two double sided arrows here and we can either save the format, and the format is the basic text attributes, that includes the font, the size, the alignment, tracking, and line spacing, or you can select to save the appearance attributes, and the appearance attributes are color, outline, glow, drop shadow. Finally, you can save both the format or the at appearance attributes, and that's the one I'd suggest you use and this because then everything's saved. And so once you select that, it simply comes up here asking you to create a name. So we'll call this one test two. When we come back here next time, we can see there is that preset. Now you can remove it, but with difficulty. And if you should ever want to remove it, I've put in the description below this video the actual way of removing that from your finder. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe because I'll be making more of these tips videos. And if you press the bell, you'll be notified when they're put up.